This is the May 1978 report requested by the Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation titled, Weather Modification, Programs, Problems, Policy, and Potential. A copy of the 784-page report arrived at the University of Florida Library here in Gainesville, Florida on May 3, 1979, according to the stamp. The report was prepared at the request of Senator Howard W. Cannon, then chairman of the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation in the United States Senate. Next is a letter of transmittal, U.S. Senate Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, November 15, 1978. To the members of the Committee on Commerce, Science, and Transportation, the report was prepared by the Congressional Research Service under the direction of Dr. Robert Morrison, Specialist in Earth Sciences, Science Policy Research Division. The completion of the report is particularly timely due to the upcoming recommendations expected from the Weather Modification Advisory Board and the Department of Commerce as Public Law 94-490 on the future federal role in weather modification, signed by James B. Pearson, Ranking Minority Member. The left page contains the committee members in 1978 at the time the report was submitted. The current members in 2015 are listed on the committee website. See if any committee members represent your state. Phone numbers and contact information are available. It's very important to know what was going on in the world of climate modification at the time of this report. In 1974, Bill Gray at the University of Colorado had submitted a proposal to begin testing weather modification using carbon black aerosols. If you recall, Dr. Gray became famous for predicting hurricanes. The title of his proposal is Weather Modification by Carbon Dust Absorption of Solar Radiation. The preface of Dr. Gray's report reads, the five papers of this report have been written in an attempt to open up a new dialogue among meteorologists and other scientists on the possibility of mesoscale weather modification through the carbon dust interception of solar energy. Growing population pressures and predicted future global food shortages dictate that man explore all his possibilities for beneficial weather modification. Nearly all the weather modification efforts over the past quarter century have been aimed at producing changes on the cloud scale through exploitation of the saturated water vapor pressure difference between ice and water. This is not to be criticized, but it's time we also consider the feasibility of weather modification on other time-space scales and with other physical hypotheses. The authors wish to share their ideas on this new area of potential weather modification with other interested individuals and obtain their comments and criticisms. They are hopeful that more exploratory research on this subject can soon be started. A link is provided for you to review this article on Dr. Gray's carbon dust proposal in addition to a 2009 proposal by NOAA and the Department of Homeland Security to use carbon black aerosols to modify hurricanes. Former NOAA head, Dr. Joe Golden, speaking for the Hurricane Aerosol Microphysics Program, HAMP, explains how computer models predict carbon black aerosols can be dumped into the circulation at precise points to increase the strength of a tropical cyclone. In a fit of hubris, Golden actually suggests that Hurricane Katrina could have been controlled with carbon black. In fact, a review of satellite images reveals aerosol dumps in the path of Katrina as it makes its way across the Gulf and into New Orleans. Next is a letter requesting the weather modification study on July 30th, 1976 by Senator James B. Pearson to Dr. Norman A. Beckman, Acting Director of the Congressional Research Service. This request comes only 24 months following Dr. Gray's proposal to use carbon black aerosols to engineer the climate. Next is a letter of submittal from Gilbert Goode, 
director of the Library of Congress Congressional Research Service dated June 19, 1978, to Senator James B. Pearson informing him that a 784-page report titled Weather Modification Programs, Problems, Policy, and Potential is ready to be submitted to the committee. On the next page, we note that this important 1978 report documenting deep federal and military involvement in climate modification was only made available as a PDF document in 2013, thanks to scanning by personnel at archive.org. A quick scroll through the contents reveals a highly detailed and scholarly report with abundant sources. The summary and conclusion reveals the federal government's excessive ambition at weather and climate modification for war and profit. There is little doubt the climate change we see today is a result of the past 40 years or more of aggressive globalization and climate modification strategies where secret operations and secret agreements by international governments are to blame for weaponizing Earth's atmosphere. One of my favorite quotes is from the testimony of witness Edmund R. Hill that begins at the bottom of page 401, a complaint just as valid today as it was in 1976. Quote, according to the complaints we get, the pattern is still remaining as it did in the early 1960s. When a thunderstorm appears to the west or is starting to build up, a plane will move in mysteriously out of nowhere and maybe fly once or twice along the leading edge of the thunderstorm, disappear, and the thunderstorm just practically dissipates." Unquote. Several enlightening excerpts are posted at geoengineeringwatch.org. Here are some screenshots. But a useful way to explore this huge weather modification report is to search for keywords like airplane, aircraft, defense, military, carbon, I even got a hit on fly ash. Just use your imagination. But the treasure trove of data in the 784 pages makes it clear that the ongoing climate engineering operations are no secret to the people you elected to represent you in the United States Senate. Hold them accountable. Links for downloading this weather modification report are in the description box.